Welcome to the fall line with chaos and company. I'm Dave Caper and I'm here with my buddy, Angelo Ross, my co-host. What's going on, Angelo? Ah, uh, waiting for it to get cold. It's supposed to get cold tonight. I know. You got the. I think you're colder down there than we are right now. And folks yeah. won't know because it's going to be about a week or so before we launch, but this is right before Thanksgiving and it is way too warm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got a, we have about a week of good temperatures at night and I saw a bunch of snow guns out on the beginner area last night. So fingers yeah. crossed. Now let's hope when uh, this launches out there, we'll have about two weeks on snow and all three of us will be smiling. And uh, mm. I'm super excited today to have Chris Erickson, our education and certification chairman, I believe is the correct title he has. We like to just call him the cert chair. And uh, Chris is the one who uh, helps us get ready for our level one, two, three reassessments, uh, no longer called exams. They're now the assessment uh, events. Um, and Chris is going to run through some of that, but um, Chris also is on the Alpine Task Force, and we're going to talk about that also. But um, Chris, thanks for being with us tonight. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here. You know, I st I'm still I'm still grooving from the from the intro music. Quite honestly, you know, I have it in my head. <laughs> bum 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 bum. No, it's just it's so catchy every time. It's like I just kind of play it over and over again every once in a while. You know, I'm feeling down. I listen to the fall line. You know, intro music. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty sweet. But we more importantly, yeah. more importantly, uh, congratulations to you guys because this is like you know a year now, right? I mean, yes. this is a, a year that you guys have been going, yep. and that's yeah. that's like really awesome. I mean, yep. it's it's uh, quite the quite the job you guys have done in bringing. You know this level of of kind of knowledge and the and the people you've brought in here for this has been really entertaining and informative and really fun. So, congratulations to both of you. Really nice, cool. nice job. Thank you. And hey, Thank hey, you, Dave, sir. who who was our first guest? That was Mr. Erickson. How oh my gosh! How did that happen? What Full the circle. heck? Full this circle. is unbelievable. We made it. Well, you know, I said to yeah. myself, you know, if if this thing survives, I will come back. <laughs> so, and, uh, so I think maybe you know I should I should have had some you know theme music behind me so uh -huh. I will survive. You know, yeah, so. there we go. But <laughs> well, we we should have those two themes going at the uh, pro jam. We'll have the uh, yes. the cast yes. company theme, and then yes. we'll have the I will you survive. Could, going. You could, and in between that, you can dance the bubble butt. <laughs> oh, gee. I'll leave that up to the ladies in my group. They can do. It. They they were into that uh, two years ago when that was rolling at the, yes. the banquet. Yes, yes. Oh my God, the bubble butt. I mean, Carrie butt. was Carrie had that and was singing that. Oh my God, I was going nuts. I was like, "What is this crazy?" Stuff? This is this, it's right. This is a PG show. It's a family show. Yeah. Now. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> so, but hey, we're here. We're here today because um, we're going to launch this sucker. You know, we're talking today, but we're planning on about a week, week and a half. So this will be going out. Pe people. People will be listening right before our pro jam, our colleges at Killington. And we just wanted to talk about some of that. But I, I first want folks to know um, a little bit about what you do here with the CERT chairman. And I know because of that role, you're on the Alpine Task Force, the National Task Force. And can you just give everyone a little, you know, a short little blurb on what that is and, and what the task force has been doing? Sure, sure. So the, the National Alpine Task Force. Um, has a representative, one representative from from each division. So there's eight division, eight divisions, and uh, we as a group get together. Um, well, quite a bit these days. It seems like uh, you know every other week or so we're having a conversation uh, about you know various things. But the the Alpine Task Force um, is is a group that basically discusses and works out. Um, things that, that need to be solved with uh, possible changes, uh, kind of looking at each other's processes uh, for certification and education programs. And it's, it's quite, it's quite eye-opening, quite honest. I've been on it for several years now. And, you know, you just have these conversations like, well, you know, how do you guys, what's your process for doing a level one exam or a level two exam? And you listen to it and go, wow, like that's, that's different than how we do it. You know, and, and then they'll listen to us. And I'm like, wow, why do you guys do it that way? And so it's like the, many times it's just this open forum of discussing different things, uh, how we, how we uh, have a process for, for ultimately certifying people uh, for, for different levels of certification. The, the thing that's always been interesting over the years is that, you know, we've always had a national standard, right? And this is, you know, going back decades, you know, as far as just national standards, here's, here's the standard for level one, level two, and level three. Um, but the reality is that, you know, as individual divisions, we kind of interpreted those national standards differently. 
And we didn't have all have the same grasp or look at the national standards through the same lens. And so what the Alpine Task Force does, along with some of the other uh, task forces out there, is that uh, we kind of look at the national standards, help develop those national standards now, and give a clearer lens to look at them so that there's more things that are the same from division to division than different. And so it's it's uh, there's a lot of cool things that are happening within the past few years as we've made this movement uh, towards uh, collaboration and consolidation and, and getting more... Uh, sameness happening throughout all the divisions, uh, which is cool. And so, you know, part of this is also making the certification that you have uh, hold value no matter where you are. If you're in the West or if you're in the East, if you're in the Northwest, in the West, Central Division, wherever it may be, um, that the value of your certification is the same. And so, you know, you've always heard, you know, over the years, I can remember, you know, when I started out 20 something years ago, it's like, well, where'd you get your certification from? Well, you got it from out West. Oh, oh, so you must, <laughs> you must be really good. It's like, or, or, you know, someone on the East might, you know, or someone in the West might say, where'd you get your certification from? Well, and I got it from, you know, uh, the East. It's like, oh, well, you know, you guys don't have, you know, the terrain there, you know, so you had, did you really get a level three, that type of thing. So, um, so we've taken that, you know, very seriously over the past few years and, made the uh, the certification uh, standard more similar so that all of the divisions uh, have an understanding of what the actual criteria are for it. And so that gets into a lot of different things uh, when we start looking at you know not just the national standards, but um, the assessment criteria, the assessment activities, and all those things that, that are really being unveiled this year. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a big deal. We're, we're unveiling uh, as an organization nationally here, some pretty huge stuff in terms of completely new standards written around the learning connection model. Um, and it's going across the whole country. I know I've been on some webinars and that, and um, I think, you know, the members out there don't know a lot of times all the stuff that happens as we get to the season. And I, I know you've been involved in stuff through the, through the off season. Um, and I've heard about some of that, but can you tell us where, where what we've been going on, what, what's been going on um, division division? Cause I know you've been in a couple other divisions in terms of um, training sessions and just um, cause people don't think we do anything till we hit snow at killing. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it, it is, it's something that I constantly have to remind myself about and also remind other people in on my task force stuff. It's like, you know, we're immersed in this stuff like all the time, like all throughout the summer, you know, having conference calls about the learning connection model, you know, and the, and the value of that and learning outcomes and learning experiences and all these, these different words and stuff out there. And they start flowing very easily you know, for me and, and for the people who are in my, my group and my close knit group. And then all of a sudden, like you said, you know, someone flips the switch, it's winter, people are coming to exams and they're like, what are these words? What are, what are the, what are, what are all these things you're talking about? I'm like, come on, we've been talking about these for years. And I'm like, no, we've been just kind of heard about these like six months ago type of thing. I'm like, oh, you're right. I've been talking about them for years. Um, <laughs> you know? So it's, 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 a, there's a reality there um, that, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the off season um, with with trying to get uh, things more understandable and to ultimately make it so um, so that someone can look at our certification standards and have a very clear understanding of what is expected of them when they go to an exam, which I think ultimately is our goal. It's like you know, there's there's should be less mystery about you know what's expected of you the processes and this is one thing that we we notice um, you know from from division to division is that the processes for assessing someone may be slightly different but the assessment criteria are the same and you know some of the process stuff can be just based on um, you know how they do their assessments. Uh, if they're doing uh, a skiing a skiing exam by itself, or if they're doing skiing and MA together, or or if they're just doing skiing, and then they do teaching and MA together, right? So different divisions do it differently. You know, here in the East, we lump all of our skiing together in one day, and then in another day we have your teaching session, which 
evaluates or does an assessment on your teaching skills, your people skills, and your MA, those things. Um, so when it comes to the, the language, the language definitely is a little different. People, you know, we joke to ourselves. We were, I was texting today with the group we're on with, uh, Bob and Bill and the crew and Bob was saying, we can't, you know, I said something about assessment and he's, and something was said about exam. And I'm like, uh, we don't do that anymore, but we have. So when we're talking in the past, it wasn't exam, but, um, that language was picked for a reason. Um, it wasn't just pulled out. I mean, number one, we wanted to have the same language across the country, but, you know, how much effort went into making sure the language was, was specific for those reasons? Yeah. I mean, again, this kind of goes back to the roots of, of what made some of this, this happen. You know, the impetus behind this was looking at our uh, standards and looking at how we have things built um, and bringing it more in line with more of a educational theme. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you look at uh, how, uh, well, again, the, the relationship that was developed with Penn State and getting this to uh, ultimately uh, possibly develop something towards, you know, credit towards an actual, you know, whatever associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, or whatever it may be. So a lot of the language you see now that's being used is the same type of language you'd see like almost in an educational setting or higher educational setting. Uh, you know, and that would be like, you know, a learning outcome. You know, what is, you know, learning outcome, you'll see that now in the uh, in the national standards when you when you download that. You know, and learning outcome is is basically it's a statement saying upon sex su successful completion of the level one certification, a candidate will be able to, and then pop, 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 will be able to do these certain things. And then there's um, you know, there's things like obviously the assessment criteria and the assessment activities. So assessment activities are the things that uh, would people would refer to many times as like tasks. So some of the tasks that you may do, and then we can we have the criteria that are uh, set for those activities, uh, and then we have mm -hmm. the um, oh, what's the one I'm missing? See, I've, I've gone blank too. There's the um, uh, experiences, uh, learning, exp experience. learning experiences, right there. See, uh, so learning experiences are things that are you know things that you can do to get better at something right that ultimately can build on your learning outcome to learning experiences so you know if if i was trying to get better at uh teaching right you know here are some learning experiences that you can do in order to get better at teaching uh, so it's it's uh, all kind of built together in this nice little package that that comes together with ultimately getting yourself to a to a learning outcome uh. And this is kind of a question I have, and, and I know I'm going to hopefully try to get Angelo's wheels turning here, but there's some folks that good, good luck chat with that. <laughs> oh, get, just get watch, the Earl, buddy. Get the out. I was just out. Out. what the hell? I forgot we were doing this. <laughs> you know, it's, well, you know, it, I mean, sorry. we're an edu we're an educational organization is kind of our mission statement. If you get the real, I don't have it right in front of me, but I mean, it's about education and there isn't a huge amount in our mission statement or our, our overall target of, of certification or standards. It's about education, but can we have really good education without some kind of checks and balances as to setting goals and these learning outcomes to see and see if people are meeting them? Um, you know, that's kind of where I'm going to Angelo, the educational piece. It's, you know, when people ask me, you know, are we a certification organization or are we an educational? I'm like, don't you have to have some kind of of um, basis of assessing what's going on in education or the education's worthless? You're asking me? Yeah, of I, course. I, 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 think he's, I think he's asking the professor right there. Yeah. I think he's asking you. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? Yeah. <laughs> you have well, to, I, mean, I want to make sure I understand. You well, have? you know, well, you know, some people think, you know, we should define ourselves as whether we're an educational organization or a certification body, you know, organization as we do. Yeah. And in my view, it's, it's, you know, we are an educational organization, but if you look at any, any form of education, like Penn state or any form of anything you do in your, the educational world, there's tests, there's things you do to see if you met the grade, if you learned this information. I mean, if we don't have like our certification, our, our assessments, our old exams, how do we, how do we grade our, our education? I don't, I'm not sure one can go without the other. Yeah. I, I think you need both. And, and I, to answer your first question, I think, yes, we are an educational organization because the word instructor is right in the title. Yeah. 
Like that's that's what we do. We provide instruction. But if you're gonna if you're gonna vouch for people's ability at various levels of performance, then your only alternative that I can think of right now to offering your own education is to put your standards out there and expect people to get educated on it somewhere else. And then they come to you to be evaluated, but then you throw all consistency out the, out the door, right. you know? So yeah, I, I think they go, they go hand in hand. Yeah. And I mean, Chris, your big thing with the staff has been, and our push here, I know in the East, because I deal here pretty much in the East for myself is um, consistency, you know, consistency on, on, the demonstrations we're showing, the information we're giving, the the way we score folks, whether it's the skiing, the teaching, um, you know, and I don't think that's going to be different now. This is hopefully moving us to even more consistency. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think in in the East we are we are set up pretty well right now. Um, you know, coming into this year, there's there's a lot of things that you know we have been sort of transitioning to over the past two or three years and just kind of taking little, little bites at it, uh, that really sets us up, uh, well for, for the new standards and, you know, kind of getting, getting back to the educational piece. You know, I, I think that what, what this, this shows, and we've always known this is, you know, training for training for certification makes you a better instructor. You know, it really, it really does. And it has in the past. And I think, now with with the tools that we have established here now and the way we've we've made it uh kind of easily readable and uh in many cases in layman's terms um you know I, I think there's there's a lot more tools out there for instructors to do some research on how to become better at something you know even if you if you're a mountain that doesn't have you know an examiner or you know or a level 3 at your mountain um you know you're going to have you know a toolbox of things you can work on with your on your own to get, you know, to get better at things. And, you know, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but you know, when I was, when I was starting and going through the system, you know, I was, and this was, you know, 20 something years ago, there was no one in my mountain that was level three, mm. you know, or they hadn't taken a level three exam in a very long time. And so, you know, it was, it was that I had to go to it, take it, fail it, learn from it, go back, take it again, fail it, <laughs> learn from it, go back, you know, and, and then, you know, it, it was, it was trial and error for me. You know, it's like by, by the time I got done with my, my third attempt, I was at a point where I could score the exam where I was like, Oh, well, I'm better than that person. I'm better than this person. I'm better than that person because I know what doesn't work. And I've, and I did that before. So <laughs> those are contributors. And this kind of gets into the thing that we've also put out there, which is the performance guide. Mm -hmm. you know, so the performance guide is now this tool that lists what a contributors to a successful performance are and contributors to an unsuccessful performance. So if you do these things, you know, people always said, Hey, I want like a, I want a black and white cookbook, you know, what's good, what's bad. If you do these things in this column, those are really good. And you got a great chance of, of passing your exam if you do those things in there. If you venture over into the contributors to an unsuccessful performance, you know, a few of those in, in, your, in your lesson plan is probably not going to end up so well for you. So again, that's something that someone can look at and read it in pretty good layman's terms and say, huh, okay, I got this. I would have loved to have had that 20 something years ago <laughs> instead yeah. of going out there and writing it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yep, that didn't work. Nope, yeah. that, nope. Don't, that's not yeah. going to work for that guy either. I can tell you right yeah. now. <laughs> I mean, those performance guides looking through, you know, we have, we have the, uh, the technical one, the, uh, people skills and the teaching skills. And, um, and also the CS1, CS2 has a, for the kids has a performance guide, um, which is great stuff for the CS1, CS2. Um, those are like, those are study guides. Those are just like you said, and they, and they give you yes and no's in terms of these things make the grade. These things don't, I mean, those themselves right there are, unbelievable tools that hopefully people will download. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And, you know, to see where they've come from again, you know, this is, this has been years in the making, you know, it, it's, it's impressive to me to see what it's finally whittled down to as far as a, a document here. Um, you know, when we were first, when the Alpine task force was first meeting and I was involved with them probably three years ago, um, you know, I, I, 
I had PTSD, you know, for weeks afterwards going to some of these <laughs> things. I was like, what the heck was that? I mean, there was things on Excel sheets with like 10,000 cells filled in on an Excel sheet. I mean, whoever invented the Excel sheet was probably turning over in their grave because it was total, it was, it was blasphemy of what was being done to that, to that uh, Excel sheet. And there was no way to like take any of that information and just say, oh my God, if any of this goes to print, it's going to be horrible. It's going to set us back like so bad. So, so it was such a great process over the years to take that information and to, to whittle it down to something that quite honestly is usable. Um, you know, in, in the reality and so many of these things that we do, you know, I like to, to, to reference, you know, some of the, some of the things that we, we do out there is like, you're always going to find something that, that you don't like, or someone's going to have a disagreement on. For sure. You know, it's like, it's like if you have a garden and you're raking it and you're always raking it, you keep finding stones all the time. No matter how much you rake it, you're going to keep finding. So, you know, it's one of those same things here. The, the more we kind of go through, like even like the performance guide, you know, that's a living document. There's going to be changes to that. There's going to be things added to it. There might be things taken away from it. Who knows? Right. But, you know, that's, that's how these things evolve is that they keep changing. They are these living, breathing documents. Um, you know, so, it's out there. And the, the national website has got a really good link to you know all of these things right now that people can get to and to look at it and to download it if they like. They can pull it up on their phone. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a great step in the right direction. Yeah. And, and I know I've already got this question. I wouldn't even say it's a question. People like to make a statement that um, you know whenever there's a change, and this is a big one in terms of the whole standard, this isn't just, you know, the Eastern division changing the, you know, the, how long they teach or, or uh, different cards, you know, when we used to do the cards and all that, this is, um, you know, and people have asked, you know, have we raised the bar? You know, is it harder to pass at level two? Like when I go to my skiing, is it going to be harder? If I go to my teaching exam, will a teaching assessment, will it be harder right. or is the standard very similar? Yeah, you know, it's that's it's a question that I actually, you know, asked myself too as we we're going through this process. And if we were if we're doing things correctly, it should be the same. It should be exactly the same. Uh, there there isn't, you know, there shouldn't be any difference because we were scoring the standards. You know, now here's here's a couple things to kind of to understand about this is that you know the the way the the assessment criteria. Are set up now, especially if you, you know, looked at like the skiing ones, for example. You know, it's not. It's the criteria isn't. You know, how well do you do a wedge turn, or how well do you do a parallel turn? But it's how do you integrate the fundamentals? You know, in many cases, how are your tactics? Or how well do you highlight a specific fundamental? You know, it's those types of things. I'm just putting those in kind of my own words, layman terms there. But that's how it is. So you know, we've always said. Which is which is great. You know, we've always said that it's not about the task, right? You've heard, you know, Ed Staff say that, you know, go out there, do it. You know, it's not about doing the perfect wedge Christie. It's not about doing perfect open track parallels. Not about the task. It's about the fundamentals. For the first time, it seems like in forever, we're actually putting our money where our mouth is on this. You know, we're we're saying, can you can you do these things in these activities? And that's the important thing to understand there. So you know, the, the way that the, you know, for the, the average member coming to our, to our exam here, if they went to an exam last year, let's just say a level two exam, and they go to an exam this year, skiing exam, they'll probably hardly notice any differences, quite honestly, in how the process of the exam goes. We'll notice very few differences in it. Um, you know, we're still going to do a bunch of activities or tasks out there, and we're going to ski them for the entire day. And at the end of the day, you're getting for the skiing part of the exam, you're getting three scores. That's it. You know, and because there's only three assessment criteria in there and you're not going to get a score for each individual activity out there. Um, and throughout the course of the day, that's all we're doing is we're just looking to see uh, if, if your fundamentals that are required in those assessment criteria are, are present. Uh, so with that said, you know, previously you may have, um, may have really screwed up an activity. Let's say, let's say like you just, you, you, you did a horrible wedge Christie um, and you just, you know, or, or you did some agility versatility exercise and stuff like that, that you just couldn't get the dance move down on. Right. And it was just like, you, I couldn't figure it out. 
that, you know, okay, so you didn't get that down, right? But everything else you were doing that day was really great as far as showing the blending and the fundamentals and showing that you could um, um, maintain speed, that you had great tactics, that you had speed control, all those other things were there. So personally, my, my feeling is that you know, that's one of those activities doesn't necessarily throw you off either. So that's a good thing coming out of this because you know we're not looking for those those times where you know you had that that one blip. You know we're looking for those those things that are continually happening over and over, and we're seeing them inherently in all the activities that you're doing, one thing or the other. Um, so I, I don't believe that the that the exam is is going to be you know any more difficult. I think it, it should be exactly the same as far as how we're scoring. Cool. Yeah. He's over there. He's rocking in his chair. Yeah, I like it. I like it. he's thinking about it. He's getting up, he's conjuring up one. He's conjuring up one. I got to take a, a sip from my mom class. <laughs> he's winding up. Uh, throw, me, throw me a I, fast pitch. Um, you want a fast pitch? Yeah. What's the difference between an exam and an assessment? Oh, that is a great, that is a great question. Let me hear, um, I'm here. I, I'm going to think about it while I'm babbling. I don't want to, cause I don't want to put you on the spot. I, li I like you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I watched language change in public ed. And you mentioned earlier about how, what we do mirrors or reflects what's happening in education generally. And I've said that mm -hmm. on the podcast before that, that <clears throat> snow sports instruction is just one little microcosm of education generally. And since we're uh, American, I, I have said before that it's a subset of American education. The trends in what we do are similar to the trends in education across the country and different uh, from different aspects. Um, and while I was doing public education, I watched language change. And I, you know, I joke, I half joke, I got out just in time. One of the one of the language changes um, that was being made as I was transitioning out, I I wasn't um, comfortable with. And uh, full disclosure, I didn't think a lot about why I wasn't comfortable with it. I might have just been curmudgeonly and not comfortable with it. But it, there was a shift from calling. Uh, they wanted to call students learners learners mm. and because they're there learning i get that and mm. then teachers they referred to us as classroom managers <laughs> and i wasn't as comfortable with that right i felt that was i felt that was going down a business model road that i felt public education was going down generally and Business and education are not the same thing. So huh. to me, when I saw those things happen, that was an inappropriate model to follow. You know, for, yep. just and as a little aside, my my alma mater, my college alma mater, the presidents had been monks up until X whatever year it was, because it's a Benedictine monastery. It's the it's biggest Benedictine monastery in the country, second biggest in the world. And historically, the president of the college had been, was a monk. And uh, maybe it was in the late 90s or the 2000s, they, they hired a new president who was a businessman, retired CEO who was an alum of the school. Things changed. And in my estimation, definitely there were changes for the better. There were also changes I didn't like. And I saw the same thing happen in public education as language changed, but it was much bigger than just a language change because those language changes reflect a philosophical change. So when you call a student a learner, what does that mean? When you call a teacher a classroom manager, what does that mean? When you call, um, well, I, I was going to almost answer it. When you call an exam an assessment, I mean, I was going to give my answer, not that it's correct. I was, but when you when when we call an exam an assessment, what does that mean? What was an exam? What is an assessment? What's similar? What's the difference? Yeah. So I mean, I would the way I look at it anyway is my answer <clears throat> is that you know an exam had a 
it had a true right way and something that was this passed, this didn't pass. Um, it was a little bit more hardlined as far as I would almost say true false questions. You know, it has to be this, or if it's not this, it's, it's not right. Um, our assessment now is that you know, we have, especially through our process here, is that we have multiple ways to assess somebody's ability of if they meet the criteria, right? So it's not just one way, but there's multiple ways to assess things to, to find out if they meet the criteria on it. So whether, again, with someone not being able to perform a certain activity, right, in our skiing world, right? It's like, okay, so could they not perform it there? That's a, That would be, okay, in an exam world, it's like, no, nope, they didn't perform it. So no good, right? In an assessment world, maybe I need to do something else with that person to see if if they really understand it or if they can really perform it with another type of activity. So I think the assessment scoring, the assessment world um, has a little bit more of a uh, organic path uh, to it as opposed to an exam, which is kind of you know very civil service in its approach. <laughs> the, the word when i looked that up myself and and looked into those two words the not only the vibe of them but the etymology like where do they come from the the one word that jumped out more often for assessment was authentic it, yeah. it's an, an authentic evaluation which sounds yeah. like what you just described so i think the logical follow-up question is are, are you going to are we going to change examiners to assessors? Uh, no, the assessors. Would you like to be? Would you like no. to be an assessor? Well, listen, I'll tell you. You know, be, you being you being a teacher, you know, and both both my. I think you and I had this conversation before. Both my parents were teachers, and you know, I always joked around. I knew exactly what I didn't want to be when I grew up. <laughs> um, just because, you know, I I I literally thought that my parents fought every day. They didn't fight. They just came home discuss their day. Um, you know, and it was the the educational environment was very challenging. And and I always joke that that uh I think you know teachers in many ways, especially you know, uh junior high school high school teachers, uh would be better trained if they went to corrections officer school instead of uh, educational <laughs> school. But you know, I digress. Um you know, but I don't it's but you know I, I I always say that to my dad. It's like, you know, dad, I never want to become a teacher he goes, Chris, you are a teacher. You're, you know, you're, you're, you've become a fantastic teacher, you know, and just teaching, I'm teaching something that people want to come to and get better at. Right. So, I mean, they're there willingly for sure, <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> your old environment when people weren't necessarily there willingly. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that the, the, the word assessment, you know, and again, this is going to be, you know, how'd you do on your exam? I, I, how'd I do on my assessment? Yeah. I mean, I think that has um, us softer edges to it uh for sure but here's an example of this right so one of the things that someone may see differently this year and as i said there weren't going to be many changes but maybe one of the things you would see differently this year is us adjusting an activity out there mm. to see if we can actually if the candidate can do what the criteria says right so Here's a here's an easy one for you. Um, you know, one activity may be you know short radius turns. All right, so we do short radius turns. We know what the describers are in that because we have it listed in our Alpine assessment guide, not our exam guide, our assessment guide, which lists some of the bullets in there with the application of fundamentals. Now, right, so that's kind of the baseline of what a short radius turn is supposed to look like. Right now, let's flip it topsy turtsy on this one. Right, see what happens. So let's do short radius turns again. Same terrain, same corridor, except I want you to slow down the rate at which you're going. All we've done is we've adjusted one of the things there, but how is that candidate going to do it? So my assessment now is looking at the candidate, saying, "Okay, so what fundamentals did they add or take away in order to meet the activity?" And so that's that's different. You know, we didn't we didn't used to do that very much. You know, we kind of tried to um, stay right by the book. Here's the here's the activities we're going to do, the tasks, and we're all going to do them, and that's it. Now we may have some ability to uh, adjust those slightly, which will be very very interesting to see that. Yeah, I can't wait for that. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be really, it's going to be cool because again, who knows, uh, you know, that the terrain you have for the day, the speed of the snow you have for the day, yeah. whether it's powdery or groomed or icy, you know, may, yeah. you know, make a change as far as how the candidate adjusts, you know, their fundamentals. And again, yeah. this is just about for skiing, adjusting the fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the tactics for me are important as, as you know, the trainer in me comes out when I'm at those ex- at the old exams. Now the assessment scoring it that in the past, the exam, I was not able to say in a real hard, firm day to, to try to change things, to, to let them to go, Hey, let's do those short turns, but let's have a little bit more schmear or skit versus so much edge that, you know, if I wanted to see if they could slow down or I wanted them to slow down, but in the old, format it was you know in our exam format it was stay by the book and it was their interpretation of the short turn so i couldn't tell if it was something they would they could do if we changed the dynamic or if it was just that's what they had i had to score just what they had so this gives me i feel some ability to put them in a in a better place to succeed give them an opportunity if i'm seeing a tactical choice maybe because that's the way they read the exam the um the old exam guide or right. maybe they, and when they read the assessment guide, it's very similar. The um, application, the fundamentals, they're similar bullets. So they may interpret that way, but I feel I have some room to adjust the task to see if the strengths are there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be another, you know, another lens for us to look at, at different things here with the candidates. And, and again, it's not going to be like, um, you know, examiners are going to be off, you know, doing their own <laughs> different things in different right. groups out there. You know, the idea is that, you know, and as we've done in the past, just so, you know, the membership knows this is that, you know, that the, the night before, typically, you know, we all kind of get together and we, we decide which activities we're going to use, you know, and that of course depends on the mountain, depends on the condition, depends on what we think is going to happen for the next day. You know, if we're going to have 12 inches of powder, we're not going to pick pivot slips, We just know that's not a great thing for us to do. Why would we do that? So we all agree what we're going to do. And we're also going to agree on how maybe we adjust some of the activities, you know, so Again, you know, if there's if there's five groups out on the hill, at the end of the day, those five groups have all done similar activities or the same activities, maybe at different places on the mountain, but they've all, you know, played with the same activities. Yeah. And, there, and there's definitely in the uh, new assessment guide, there's definitely that um, disclaimer because we were kind of stuck with what was in there and we it's hard to list every single task we might do. And as conditions change or say a level three a you know, appears at Hunter, we're there and there's no bumps, you know, it's, 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 um, so it's not like we're going to come up with a crazy task, but there's room there to look at what would we do if we didn't have bumps, um, that might not be on the list. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think the, the biggest takeaway for, for people who are, you know, preparing for exams is that, and I know you guys are great at, at doing these types of things, but just doing things differently, right playing around with that duration, intensity, rate, and timing with different types of, of activities that you're doing on the hill, finding different pitches to do things. Um, obviously, you know, playing with those as much as you possibly can as a, someone going for an exam. Yeah, do them the way that they're written down, the way that they're prescribed, right? Because, I mean, that says, it also says that in the, in, the, um, in the national standards, you know, it says, do the activity as prescribed. The as prescribed stuff for us in the East is what's written in the Alpine exam guide, right? So that's the as prescribed part, you know, but do those, but also mix it up, play around with it, you know, go to different mountains, get off your home hill where, you know, you know, every right turn, every left turn and, and how many turns it takes to get from point A to point B. Um, you know, you have to kind of get yourself out of your, your comfort zone, uh, with with playing around, so you have the the biggest ability to blend those fundamentals when you're in an exam situation. Yeah. He's shaking his head. I think the as prescribed phrase allows for, like you said, creativity on the part <laughs> of the assessors, the examiners. Yes. Right. <laughs> And then, and, and I was look, I'm looking through the performance guide for Alpine, and and w- when you look at the learning outcomes, there's a real um, where, what, and when aspect to the first collection of of phraseology. It's very tactical in its nature. What, when, when do you do this? What do you do? Where do you do it? Um, you know, it, it, for example, 
somebody turns on top of the bump as a tactic versus somebody who's in the troughs or whatever, one tactical bit to that language. When you go down into the biomechanics, it becomes how. How do you get it done? But turning this thing, tilting this thing, and so on and so forth. And why is, t- is technical understanding? You know, why do you do that? But the, but the whole as prescribed bit added in my, when I read it, added a whole what if portion to it. What if we do this? Right. What if, what if we try that? And as a, I'm going to say teacher, but that now is going to include examiner and assessor too, not classroom manager though. <laughs> um, that allows for, uh, humanistic creativity you, you, the conditions change in the course of the day right and maybe under the old exam mindset format you, we can't deviate from these activities because we posted them in the morning or whatever yeah but with what if you know now you can change it up to the benefit of your uh candidates you know yeah i mean you know t- definitely to a to a point in the in the skiing exam, you can you can do that, right? I think where you see a lot more of this um, coming in that interaction coming up is when you get more into the teaching part of the exam too. You know, where you start um, because you know if if you've been to a teaching exam uh, in the past couple of years, you notice that you know, like you said earlier, Dave, we don't do it the old way with pulling out cards and and having you know the the person's profile and their skill development on, and then bring them together. And there you have what you're teaching out there. You know, now in our, our new exam format, uh, we have people coaching people in the group. You know, everybody's out there. They're skiing through some activities. There's some MA happening. And then people in the group work with those people to, to get them better at something, to understand, right? And through that process, we have the ability to watch their their teaching skills and their people skills and their technical MA skills, you know, how they're you know hitting those boxes and, and how they're they're meeting the assessment criteria for that. So that becomes extremely organic because you know I don't know what to expect at all. I mean I've I've many cases like you guys know I've I've many times just met these these people for the first time. I don't know what their interpersonal type of skills are. I don't know how they coach. And I don't necessarily know how people in the group ski or what they're going to show us. So in many cases, and I, I joke about this, I've, I've never had a, a, a teaching part of the exam be the same for you know, any to be the same, quite honestly, because the people in that determine you know, what's going to happen. Um, as opposed to a skiing exam, right, where there's less communication going on, you know, there's, they're, they're there for the skiing part, you know, and I'm there to watch them move, you know, biomechanically and see how things turn left and turn right and, you know, and throw in a, an assessment uh, score for that. Um, but in those, in the teaching exams, there's, there's things that can, can be learned when they're out there in front of the group. There's things that can be learned when I'm talking to them later on. There's things that can be learned by me just observing them, uh, interacting with other people in the group. So there's 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 more things going on for sure, and that's why you know in our teaching exams we have uh, we have a smaller group in that because there's you know there's so many people you know so many so many kind of criteria that we're looking at in there, um, but again you know that learning connection model is that model that shows you know this is what a good skier or a ski teacher. You know, encompasses these fundamentals, you know, the people skills, the teaching skills, and the technical skills. Those things are what really encompasses a, a good or great ski teacher. And that's what we keep coming back to after all of this, you know, discussion is that that learning connection model that we unveiled, the national team unveiled, you know, gosh, I don't even know now, four years ago, maybe even more. I, I don't know. It seems like it's been around for a while, but it's, uh, it's, that's been the basis for all of this stuff that's coming out right now, which is so awesome. It really is. Yeah. So when we look at, you know, the nitty gritty, what the folks are going to be coming to Killington, that's going to be our first launch of our assessments with the level one college and the level two college. Um, so the level one, you know, when they get to that, that, sh- that sheet looks big until you, 
you know, I, I looked at it in terms of the f- assessment form and it looks like a lot of boxes. Yet when I started to go through it, it's, I couldn't find anything that we haven't been talking about in the learning connection model that we haven't been trying to score. It's just actually in pieces on there. So people know exactly what we're scoring. Um, is there some advice um, for our level one folks when they look at to not get overwhelmed, the asset, cause you know, they're going to go look, hopefully they go look at the assessment form uh, the and look at the um, performance guides and all that stuff. I mean, what would you suggest as they're getting ready and getting to Killington, what they should look at and how they should, should they worry about each box on the assessment form? Right. Right. Well, I mean, for, first, just a little discussion about the assessment form, right? I mean, for, so as we talked earlier, you know, every, every division has basically a different process for how they go through, you know, an exam, right? The assessment form is a national form. So this is the first time ever that every single division is using the same assessment form, which is really cool because that starts pointing us into the, the direction now of actually developing some of the same processes, which is even better, right? So we start going down that path. So that's just a little you know, nugget about the assessment form and how cool it is that we're all using the same assessment form. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as a level one you know, inst- uh, instructor candidate going for things, you know, what we want to see out there is everything we've been talking about previously, right? We want to see that you can teach, coach, and ski at that um, intro lesson, you know, that you're, you're uh, a beginner teacher, you know, and that you can do those types of things. So, yeah, should you look at should you look at um, uh, the assessment forms, national standards, and just make sure that you're hitting on those types of things? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, can you can you do the basic maneuvers that you would be teaching for someone? You know, I always like to say coming off the bus for a coming off the bus group lesson, right? Because that's what we're evaluating is, you know, can you do, you got a kick out of that, Angela, I can see that, but that's what, you know, level <laughs> one instructors, this is what we're doing, right? Is that yeah. we're teaching them to be, you know, on the assembly line of teaching a lesson, right? Very cognitive, right? Very cognitive yeah. type of process here is that, okay, first we're going to do some boot drills. Then we're going to do one ski. Then we're going to do two skis, all those types of things. Very important, very yeah. important basis to get those things down. But we want to make sure that they can, you know, have a process, that they have a lesson that they can actually do, uh, and that they can address some of the fundamentals that are in the national standards. There, talking to the group, if if a if someone could actually uh, do some individual feedback, do some you know individual type coaching, that's awesome. That's awesome. But for the most part, at the level one standards, we're talking more of doing uh, addressing the entire group as a whole, oh. right? Yeah. And, and as we look at um, having time to do a fair assessment, what is the length? And just, just an estimate. Um, I, I don't want anybody to hold you to this oh, or no. the exact 32 <laughs> seconds, you know, three minutes, and 32 seconds. But I mean, what's the roughly time frame? We know that folks at the level one are going to have to present information in front of their group, in front of their examiner, maybe assessor in the future, as Angela is talking about. But how long should they think about they're going to be in front of that group leading their, their, what they do in that lesson. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think, you know, a, a cumulative, cumulative amount of time, right. Many times is, is part of this. So, you know, do you, do you want to say that, you know, I want, I want to see someone for 20 minutes, you know, level one uh, candidate, 20 minutes in front of the group teaching something. No, I wouldn't want to see that. You know, if you can give us a, a piece or a segment of what you would teach in that intro lesson, that's great. You know, being able to address the group. If you can contribute to group conversations, you know, and, and being part of that conversation that the examiner is generating, that's awesome. You know, when, when, you're, when it's called upon, right? When you're actually requested to, hey, what does everybody think about doing this? What could we do differently? You know, that's important part of that, uh, being part of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, you know, the, the regular part of a lesson, you know, if, if I can get people in an exam to teach a few parts of that uh, assembly line <laughs> in that teaching area, you know, that, that can show us a bunch about someone's teaching skills, their people skills, their interpersonal yeah. skills, how they, uh, how they manage the environment safety wise, those types of things. Yeah. And, and as we move to the, uh, the level two, um, if we, the skiing, as you said, the skiing, I don't think people are going to see a humongous during the day difference other than the ones you've talked about already in terms of, you know, the, ex- the examiners may, may um, alter the task for benefit and for it to see some different aspects of the fundamentals. Um, and, but with the teaching, 
as I look through, I don't see a lot of big process changes for us. Is that correct? Yeah. Again, you know, uh, not a lot of big process changes at all, except that we have, you know, the assessment form that is a little bit different, uh, has us, you know, thinking about a, f- a few other things that may help generate some questions that we may have for the candidate. Um, and again, this is, this is an important time for the, anyone going for an exam early season to, to pull up this stuff and to see what the national standards are, look at the assessment form and see exactly what we're going to see out there as far as uh, scoring it. But you're right. I mean, there shouldn't, as far as it, it looks from the, you know, 5,000 foot level, it's going to be, you know, almost very similar, exactly the same almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, it's more, I've got to, I have to make sure that I'm, I'm putting the, the assessment in the right places for me as the assessor, the examiner, because we're not, it's not like one score that we've had. It's, you know, the pieces of, of their program are put into different boxes on the assessment form to highlight those and they can look at those, but there's not like something different. They're going to be asked to do on the Hill other than do some MA, do some coaching of the folks in the group on the task they ski and give some feedback and get the group to interact and, and, and do the, the learning connection model, the, the technical pieces, the technical understanding, um, which I think is pretty neat. We've as, as much as the, as things have changed, it hasn't changed that like you have to teach different here. You just have to teach well. Yeah. I mean, you know, a good lesson is still a good lesson. And, and, you know, as, as we've sometimes, you know, said, you know, it's like, there's, there are times where, where you're in these exams where you, you, you don't have to pull anything out of your pocket many times. You just kind of like going out. Oh, this is, this is really good. They're kind of hitting all the points right now and they're making adjustments for who's in the group. Um, you know, nothing, nothing gets me more excited these days about seeing some of the teaching we have there is that when something doesn't go as planned for the instructor who's leading the group at that point and they totally make a dodge instead of a weave, and they just change their course just a little bit to get that person back online, um, or they modify their approach, they modify their lesson, which is, you know, what we talk about so much now is, are they, are they teaching, right? Are they teaching or coaching, right? Or are they giving a presentation? And, you know, we don't, you know, presentation is fine for like the level one, maybe, right? They're giving a presentation there because that's, that's what they know. That's what they can do. That's what they've been taught. They've probably been many times level one instructor has been, you know, an instructor for a year, right? Or maybe not even a year. And so they know how to do this, this, this. They think about it really hard. When you start getting up to the level two and level three, it's like, I don't want to see a presentation anymore. I want to see your coaching. I want to see you to take the individual pieces of people out there and and develop something. And that's, that's where it gets really awesome. Level three exam, for sure. Level three, you know, we want to see you take us to terrain that that group is skiing on. You know, we want to see you a level three instructor is being certified to teach an advanced level skier. So please don't take us to green terrain. You know, I mean, if, unless there was something very, very specific, you were trying to teach us on green terrain, and then you were going to bring that up onto K27 or something like that. But, you know, it, it's, we want to see, you know, some high level coaching at a high level certification. That's, you know, it's kind of how it's all laid out over the, over the past few years here, which has been great. When I look at this process now from the perspective of being a technical director and the authenticity that's built into the process, somebody coming back with a silver pin or a gold pin through this process, I get really excited about that. And I, because I agree. I, and when I went through the process, I prepared presentations, put together um, index cards, and I had everything planned out. If they ask me this, I'm going to do that. It was like a big dichotomous key of presentation responses, right? But you can't do that now. You coach who's in front of you, and success under that model to me says something. It's it's really good, but then I I also wonder, you know, look back through time and at a, on a larger scale, um, I would I'd go out on a limb and say that much of the mental energy that an instructor spends 
being an instructor is spent toward prepping for exams. If you, you have somebody going up through certification, that exam year, that level two exam year, that level three exam year, that occupies a large amount of their mental energy. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, absolutely. but you, with that mindset, and you look back in time at how many decades this happened and across the country, when you're preparing to present, you can commoditize your, the people in front of you. The people in front of you become a means to an end, right? They're practice for the real deal, which is your certification exam, you know? Right. But I think with the, with the script being flipped, the way you prepare now is to look at the people who are in front of you and work with the people who are in front of you. And I wonder what sort of effect this exam process will have on ski instruction across the board, across the country, up and down the levels moving forward a couple years, a couple decades. Are, are we going to see members of PSIA, ASI become uh, really much better at this because of this process? And I, I, I would say I wouldn't be surprised if, I, if we see that happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the one thing we haven't really talked about here, which is, which is a huge part of, of where we've been in the past with, um, with certification and assessments is our own personal biases, you know, and that's, that's huge, right? Is that, you know, understanding what your bias is and what you think import is important and what this, this new assessment, you know, um, layout has a, is is really kind of taking our biases and bring them into check a little bit um which is super important you know we all have those biases they're good to have but it's really good to make sure that you know what they are too <laughs> um that you that you understand what your own biases are i know what my biases are especially in skiing i know which activities that I tend to hone in on so much though that that you know people who I coach and go someplace else, you know, other examiners may say, Oh man, Chris Erickson's hands are all over you. Like <laughs> you you have had he's had an influence on you because I just saw what you did, and that's an Erickson move, right? And so and so you can you can tell that and I can tell it with other people and, and who it's like, hey, I know you're hanging out with so and so. Why? Because you're like really skid skis. Um, you know, you're doing this, you know, and it's like, ah, but do that really well. I said, Yes, you do. <laughs> so, you know, our biases and having them in check is important to know, important to understand. And yeah. this new assessment criteria, this new assessment guide, uh, out, uh, the uh, assessment standards, national standards, um, you know, help keep those things in check. Yeah. So, so I want to throw something out to um, both of you, and this, and Angelo's going to go. He's opening a can of worms, which I'm going to. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of, I hope it helps. That when I've been going through the standards and the performance <laughs> guides and the assessment forms. It's really very, it, it, try, it, it tries to, and I think it does become very transparent as to um, why people will pass, a will pass a level one, why they'll pass a level two, why they'll pass level three. There's, the criteria is there. Um, when I look at teaching and from my mindset of being an educator and coaching, I want, I, I would, I am going to um, try to advise people I work with, yes, this is what you're being scored on and you're going for, say, your level two, and especially in the coaching and teaching areas that I'm like, look at the level three stuff because it's really neat when you, like you talked about earlier, Chris, about the level three, you know, when someone's doing it well and they're, they're coaching the individuals in the group and they're making sure feedback is pertinent to each person. No one's left. I mean, if someone's able to do that, even though it's level two, it's, it's a pass. It's like, and it's much easier to coach. I think when you're thinking about what's in front of you, and that's what Angela is saying, you know, also, you know, he was a presenter. He said, throwing himself out there into the bus, <laughs> but you know, you're very much a presenter. If you're not looking at the individuals in the group and it really level three focuses on that, when you're giving feedback, when you're coming up with your activities, how it hits everybody. I'm just wondering for you, you guys, if you've looked at that, this, to at least have people that are getting ready for exams look at the other criteria beyond what they're looking at just for reference. Um, you know, I mean, I, I haven't used that, 
of tactic, you know, going on there. I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, I've made it very, very apparent to people that, you know, that there's, there's more when you, when you're going from, for example, level one to level three, um, you know, you kind of get more from that group based to individual based, you know, and that's the difference there. Uh, and then get people at that level one. You know, it's like, okay, so you all, you all you have to do here is, is work with a group, right? But it'd be really cool if you could start working with some individuals too and start playing around with that, that level two standard a little bit here. But um, I've never really kind of played around with say, hey, I know, I know you're here, but why don't you just look ahead and see what, what else is going on? It's, that, that could be, I guess, fun to play with. Yeah. yeah I, just, I just don't want to hold the bar. I mean, they're like, well, I'm just going to get to this. You know, I, I think good teaching is good teaching. They should still look down the road because the, the performance guides and the standard really depicts what good teaching is. I kind of jumped yeah. in on you, Angelo. Well, I, I, no, I, I think there's something to it. I think there's a couple things to it. Like, first of all, your mindset. You know, when, mm. when I was coming up through, um, I was always a step behind, step behind Jim Pottinger, who's an Eastern assessor slash examiner, <laughs> right? <laughs> But Jim, Jim's a year older than me, and he was always a step ahead. But when he was, when I was working with him, he would say, train for level two, like you're going for level three, train for level three, like you're going for dev team. And that mindset, I think, is super healthy. Mm. But I also think that looking ahead in the literature can be healthy. And do you remember last year, we were doing one of these, one of these podcasts and um, talked, uh, we talked about entrance, entr entrance strategies. And if you like, for example, if you know nothing about cooking, one of the ways you can go about that is by a very systematic thing. You can learn what all the different uh, flatware is, what all the different knives that exist. You can memorize all the forks, the different napkin folds. And six months into the course, you'll learn how to crack an egg. And then you'll learn how to do all these different styles of egg. That's one way. That's pretty typical style of instruction in America, right? Versus a different mindset, which are these entry strategies where you teach yourself how to make one really challenging meal from start to finish. And then you can start to adjust that thing. So today, instead of using sage, I'm going to use paprika and see what that does. And you start to tweak that one expert thing you can do in order to broaden your understanding. And I think you can take that approach as a skier too, like if you're a pretty new, if you're pretty new to being a ski instructor, for example, and something like pivot slips is not anything you've ever done. And maybe it's a level three, a thing they do at level three assessments. I don't think there's any harm in practicing pivot slips because if you, if you do dial that in, then you, you start to apply that to skiing the funnel. You start to apply that to lane changes. And it's that entry strategy approach that works in other aspects. So I think as far as you trying it, Dave, I think it's really smart. I think it's going to work well for some folks. I always I think that's farther the, than we can go. That's, that's <laughs> the, that's the key. That's the key. It may work good for some folks, right? Yeah. I mean, right. Different, you know, learners as far as their learning styles and stuff like that and how they would process that. Yeah. For some people yeah. that might work really well. And there's, you know, there's even a fear factor with that. You, you might have somebody who's a level, a brand new level one, and they don't want to go onto the black terrain, but you may have somebody who that doesn't bother. Them. That probably yeah. would work better for somebody like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been great. I hope this helps folks as we get into the season to kind of understand the material there and um, they can grab the assessment guide right off our website. And then the national standards, the assessment forms and the, all the performance guides are on the snowpros.org for the national site, correct? They are. They are, yes. And they should be, I believe there's links off of our PSA Eastern website to get there. Um, and, and I know they might be a little confused when they see the assessment forms, but I think if they look at them, it's just like you said, if they look at the learning connection. So the skiing one's pretty easy for us. We have our skiing on there and our professionalism scores. And then if we go to level two, there will be kind of two score sheets they have to pull, right? They've got to pull the, the MA and the tech score on one, and then then they'll have the people skills and teaching skills on another one. Exactly. Be, yeah, and that'll be level two and three the same. So yep, exactly. Because of the different divisions, different regions, we're going to have to call them soon, is what I know. Yes. Yes. Three <laughs> regions. Exactly. And maintain and attain. Maintain. maintain and, and, oh gosh, <laughs> so hard. My head hurts sometimes. It's so hard. hard. I think it's hard. 
That's <laughs> hard. <laughs> yeah. Chris, thanks. And uh, yes, Chris was our first guest on the show. So um, now he's on for a second time and hopefully we can have him again at some time. We think about something we want to chat about because we can always come up with something with skiing. We can yeah. even just talk about the same things and come up with different results. Usually. <laughs> of course. Well, it's just like, you know, geek, geek talk with Chris, you know? Yeah, there it is. It's awesome. So um, yeah, I want to thank our uh, sponsors out there, the friends of the podcast. We want to thank Nick's boot fitting over at Mount snow. If you haven't got your boots done, you want to do that. And then uh, I know Angela and I, when this launches out, we'll probably have our boots on and been fitted by Nick. I know I'm doing mine next week. And then also want to reach out to uh, Blizzard Technica for helping us out making this a possible again. So as Chris says, we can keep going for another season. I think where it was this episode 10 or 11 this, this season so far, Angelo. I'd have wow. to go back and count. Yeah. Well, I will. When we, when we get ready to launch it, I got to put the right number on it. We should. Yeah, we should. Thank, know. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, <laughs> hey, here we go. Ahead, ready? Yeah. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Bow, bow, bow. Fade out, fade out. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. 